city boys on the block in the field, on the screens, in your ear. Turn me up, listen up real clear. City boys, we known to keep it real. Welcome to the City Boy Podcast. We live from Austin, Texas. This is where a bunch of guys talk about the shit we love, whether that be sports or whatever we feel like talking about that day. We got some fun stuff to talk to y'all about today. We in the midst of the NBA playoffs, close to the finals, conference finals. You know what I'm saying? Oh, let's go back to the introduction real quick. I'm your host, Jameer Galhart. And here are my dogs. Rod the God on Instagram. Y'all follow me, man. What's up, y'all? It's Moon Man Ed back in the flesh. Shout out to my man, City. Four-time champions. Four in a row champions. What, four times. Four times. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> in a row. You know what I'm saying? But, all right, let's backtrack. I did mention NBA playoffs. We in the heat of it. Conference finals. Eastern, Western. Yeah. Which side y'all want to start on? The blue or the red? Well, I'm going to go with the red, then. West? Okay, the Two. West. It's a lot of drama over there. Just the conclusion of a tight seven-game series. <laughs> Minnesota, Denver. Minnesota knocked them off. How do y'all feel about how that series ended? Did Denver let y'all down? Not really, because Denver was up, you know, at halftime almost by 20 points, 15. Or 20 points, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, like we said last episode, bro, Anthony Edward is Bill definitely, bro. He basically hyped his team up to pull off the win. He only had 16 points. But there were important 16 points. It's I not like remember uh, last time I was sitting in his chair, we talked about the, <laughs> the right. fighting roles that Anthony <laughs> Edwards and Cat, Cat was having. That's and right. As I can recall, I called it. I said, Cat got to Cat gotta kind of step back a little bit because he's pushing too hard. So once Cat decided to step back, I didn't say he completely gave up his leadership role, but yeah. he like – all right, let me let you take a little bit more. And now the team is is dynamite. Like mm -hmm. Anthony Edwards is literally coming into his own. And man, I I'd say he looking like the face right now. Is this the last we gonna see in the Denver Nuggets? Nah, they'll be back. Um, this team is built for playoff contention mm -hmm. for years to come. But when you're talking about a championship level team, I think there's some tweaks on this team that need to be adjusted. I mean, from watching that game, I just think Jamal Murray and Jokic did everything. Like, it wasn't enough other pieces. Like, mm -hmm. you got Jokic with 30, you got Jamal Murray with 30. But then you got everybody else on the Timberwolves, 15, 16, yeah. 25, 30. Like, team effort. It's, it's, it's a whole team effort over yeah. there with the Timberwolves. Yeah, like, I mean, Rudy, my, Rudy Gobert is I, – I ain't never seen him <laughs> like this before. He different. Yeah, yeah. Dropping double-doubles. Yeah. I ain't never would have to worry about him scoring. I guess this is what we've been saying. Like, Mike, Michael Porter Jr. is – and on and off switch. He can be on when he's on, and when he's off, he's definitely off. Caldwell Pope, same thing. He was definitely off this whole game seven series or game whatever. But, you know, it just gives you give more credit to Minnesota because what you were saying, everybody rose to the occasion. Like, they didn't want to get eliminated. So, and it's all, it's all praise to Anthony Edwards, bro, because he hyped his team up. Shows a testament how hard it is to make it. To mm -hmm. the finals. They Man. did it once. They looked like they was primed to do it again, and they didn't. They couldn't repeat. Yeah. Show you how hard it is to do that. Yeah. So big shout out to the people who did, like Kobe. Who, who else won back-to-back? -back? Oh, the Warriors went back-to-back. -back. MJ. Like, team. Mm -hmm. MJ, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It, it's hard. It's hard to do that shit, bro. Talk about the other game in the West. The Mavs knocked off the fucking... I forgot their name because they let me OKC down. Thunder. OKC. O OKC. The Mavs knocked off OKC in game six. Now, that was a good game. That was a game where they was throwing blows back and forth. Yeah. I, it could have went either way. I agree. Definitely. Um, I feel like, um, you know, even though some key players like, you know, Luca and you know Kyrie were kind of off in the first half. Mm -hmm. They definitely turned it up in the second half to kind of well, really together. So you gotta understand that that team, the Dallas Mavericks team, they've most of them been in that position before. They've been there before. Mm -hmm. I've done this already. I've done this. Yeah. That young OKC team, OKC, OKC team, they they knew. They knew to it. Like they was surprised. They really, I feel like they was probably surprised that they got this far. They was yeah. just like, was man, young. we hooping, yeah. but like. It's like a lot of, they don't got a lot of veterans on there. It's just, you know, they building up, they building a rapport. Yeah. But now they got the rapport, they got the standard, it's set. So now 
I see them back in there next year. I do. I, I think they got obvious things to address, obvious things they know they need to change. Of course, everybody knew the lone big man on their team was Chet. After Gafford and PJ got to Dallas, they became one of the best defensive teams in the league at that moment. And one one big versus four is you're not going to get shit you're done. You're not going to get it done. You're not, but they do got still got a lot of assets. And I heard immediately they already thinking about putting Josh Giddy on the market. He do got some upside. He is a good player. Yeah. And he just, ever since you got the emergence of SGA, you kind of – don't need Giddy no more. To be honest, you, you just don't need him no more. He's a good player, but he just he he's fitting with the new with the new way that they're going. He mm -hmm. he's able to be phased out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's like they're not gonna lose nothing getting rid of him. But what he gain. can do on the court, he can get minutes somewhere else easily. But easily. And you you seen Buddy was on the bench in the second half of that game, and and, and yeah, minutes came. From he been to one of their core pieces for the last two years to now he barely getting minutes. So and they say I'm getting traded. I don't know what. I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying he gotta go, man. But uh, what a pick, uh, lively from the Mavs was. He was twelfth, twelfth overall, bro, in the first round, and he's playing. He's playing really good, bro. Like yeah. probably the steal of the draft, in my opinion. Not for, like one of them, yeah. Yeah, well, you like, just you know some people just like you know. They always worry about those first five picks, those first ten yeah, picks. I agree. But just, it's some some of them do some dogs. Them, you know, like example we talking about basketball, but football. Tom Brady was like, you know, round four, five, six, six or yeah, something like that. Round, yeah. But now he like one of the most memorable quarterbacks in, you know ever played football. It's like it don't matter where you now it don't matter where you start. It's about how you finish. Exactly. And he was just given an opportunity. And besides, like. The Mavs have been needing a big man for years. Yeah, yeah. Ever since DeAndre Jordan basically really, bullsh no, bullshitted really him, you know what I'm saying? It was really dirt. Once yeah, Dirk yeah, left, yeah, basically, that yeah. big man yeah. went downhill. <laughs> <laughs> but with yeah. a player like Luka, you just need a role man. You need somebody who can roll to the rim. Right. It, they knew they needed that. They addressed that. They got that. So that should solve that problem. You still got to watch out for Buddy having eight turnovers, seven turnovers. But, you know what I'm saying? They I'm do play. Them shots, man. That's. So but but he was actually efficient in game six. Oh, no, no, he was. I'm he saying, the only, only inefficient part was the turnovers. He's still the highest. It's, like, a, double, it's a double edged sword. But I can't wait. Pick your poison. I can't wait. I can't it's wait. It's a double edged sword. Dog. Because the, the, the size advantage that they had the last two rounds is does no longer <laughs> exist. No, at all. So yeah. now it truly will fall on Luka and Kyrie. So let's see if y'all going to show up. Because, come on, let's be real. When you watch the Clippers series and you watch the OKC series, they dominated off of rebounds and in the paint. That's where they just dominated there. When the league got out of hand, it's because these niggas couldn't get no rebounds. Excuse right. my language. You know what I'm saying? These dudes couldn't get no rebounds. You know what I'm saying? But, man. Well, now, well, now you got to go into it. They got Cat and they got, like I said, Rudy Gobert who's playing <laughs> – Who's playing the best he's ever played in a long time? So that that paint stuff ain't about to fly. That paint shit. Would Rudy go there in there? Nah, that's not happening. That, ain't about to fly. Ain't about to that like, gaffer shit not happening like that. Like, dude, to be honest, like lately these last couple of games with the Timberwolves, Anthony Towns has been playing like Reed has though. Reed comes off the bench and he's just. Uh, that's what I'm saying. That, that, that big man shit yeah. gonna cancel out this yeah. this round. It cancels out. He also big though. Yeah. He you know he's on um, six six eight six nine long. That ain't happening. <laughs> That's not happening. Man. Look at how when the Clippers subbed out Zubox, you brought Miles Plumley in, who's six ten and not he not giving you no paint presence. When you got to the next round, when you sub out Chet, you bring out Williams in, who's six eight, basically a power forward running small ball, can't do shit against Lively and them. You, it was just a mismatch. <laughs> but now this round, you sub out Gobert and Cat, you got Nas Reed. Yeah, you got niggas that go and watch the paint. All that bullshit. Finna stop right now, bro. All that shit finna stop right now, bro. That shit finna stop. So, you, would you be counting? So, we're talking about the series now, right? Mavs, T Wolves. It is gonna be between Kyrie and Luca, right? Of course. But who are you gonna count on from the Timberwolves offensively? You know, besides Cat? besides Anthony Edwards, man, I don't even think Cat can. Yeah, I don't no, no, think no. I don't think Cat can even do that no, though, bro. I already said it. Rudy Gobert is averaging a double double right now, dog. Yeah, but that's not. I don't they gotta stop him, bro. I don't think that's gonna work. He's a problem right now. The matchup, all right. Let's we let's just, just give it a little clear break. We is now talking about the conference finals. We just recapped it, but now we finna talk about the matchup between the Timberwolves and. 
the Dallas Mavericks. Yes. And we we talking about the big what? What are we talking about? Who going? Big man sick? canceling out basically. Big man, yeah. canceling out. Big yeah. man gonna cancel out. That's that's the key. That's right. the key to the series for me. Right. Big man, who gonna be bigger? I don't think like you got scoring wise. The Timberwolves are getting scoring from everywhere. Jaden McDaniels, every position. Cat, Anthony Edwards, Michael Conley. They get they getting scoring from everywhere. Now the scoring from Dallas primarily comes from Luca and Kyrie and. So so PJ. PJ been sold the last two games except he scored in the end. They don't got as many scores as Minnesota. Minnesota plays better defense more consistently than them, and they are as big as them. So, like I said, this is my prediction. I'm gonna go first right now. The Mavs is gonna lose. And all the Luca bullshit that I've been talking about, the high usage rates, turn the turnovers, the high shot count will be exploited. Agree with you. He will be exploited. I agree with you on it because uh, what she said at first, she said he needs a role, man. Ain't going to be nowhere to roll to because yeah. Rudy Gobert going to be sitting right there. Reed going to be sitting right there. Cat going to be sitting right there. It ain't it ain't nowhere to roll yeah. to. <laughs> ain't no, ain't going to be nowhere to roll to. So guess what he going to do? He going to jack up a shot. He going to turn the ball over. He going to look for Kyrie. Ain't going to be nowhere for Kyrie to go because they going to have got tons of defenders. There's a lot of dogs out there that's, that want to eat. I feel it, man. I feel it now. I agree with all your takes, and I see the vision. And it's been happening. We've been seeing it. But one thing I will count on is Kyrie Irving has a championship ring. Yeah. And he's been in these situations before. And if Luka struggles, I know for a damn fact Kyrie will step to the plate. And, knock, bro, that three-pointer that he hit with OKC that was in and out and then, bloop, fell back in, come on. Yeah, that was just, that was just God. I was this guy. He should be. He should be praying to the Lord above because you missed that shot. Any of them shots in them trade offs? Because OKC wasn't playing either. Right, right. SGA coming down here cuts threes, keeping a minute. If they miss any of them shots, they going to a game seven. It's just gonna be momentum, man. Whoever is you know doing things offensively and shutting it down defensively, that's that's right, bro. Yeah, I said the best, uh, Jordan. He said basketball is a game of runs. Who gonna keep the run the longest? Yeah, facts. And both of these teams been running. Well, kind of, kind of, sort of. So, what do you got in the series? You got obviously T Wolves. I got T Wolves. I, I say T Wolves and six. T Wolves and six. That's a good prediction. I was, I was gonna kind of say that same thing. Too. Damn. I don't man. think it'll go to a game seven. I mean, you know, NBA, mm -hmm. they might do it to sell some tickets. You know, they, gonna, <laughs> they might make something happen, but they shouldn't go to game. It's but tough. I man. do think if the Timberwolves win the first two games at home, four or five, because the only reason the Mavs been able to steal one. But I don't, I don't not super confident they're gonna steal one, because the way you won some of them games in them last in the last two series, I don't see you beating the Timberwolves that way. It's just you, you're not gonna get, you're not gonna get scraped by like that. You're not gonna out rebound niggas to death. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think this is a, I think to me this is gonna be a seven game series again. Um, I doubt it. I doubt it. I got the Mavs <laughs> winning, bro. Four three. I just, I got to figure Mavs, look, look, I got to, I got to get you uh, not, look, look, this man, <laughs> look, I'm going to just say this. This man had said in the last round that OKC was going to sweep the Mavs, bro. What happened, man? I think, I think we need to leave it alone and we'd like to see how it goes. <laughs> Who you got, bro, before we wrap it up, though? Man, I, I, I talk, T-Wolves, T-Wolves going to get that, man. That's, six. they hungry. They hungry. It's six. Absolutely in six. They are hungry. It's they a hungry. good, it's a good series. This is the best series for the playoffs, like the Eastern Conference. Nah. Hey, that's a joke. Yeah. All you Dallas Mavericks fans and Luka Dunces, fuck you, man. Y'all is not going to the finals. We don't know if they're You are not going to the finals. You're his, not. His You're not is, going. His take doesn't so, speak for all of us. I would say, <laughs> so now we're talking about, you know, the Western Conference finals, man. Is it is it, is the Celtics gonna get it done? You're talking about the Eastern Conference finals? Yeah, and Eastern Conference finals. Eastern Conference finals. Is the Celtics Gonna get it done this year. Ah oh, man, it's it's tough, bro. Brzingis is gonna be out this whole series, essentially. And I, I think they're gonna sweep him. Wow. Not to cut you out, but I think I think Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, the Pacers just they just got went through a seven game series, had to had to fight it out, and only only reason they even in this position is because the Knicks was just too damn injured. The Celtics have been sitting watching them for a week while they've been battling out. The Celtics is going to tear their ass up. Game one, out the jump. I, I'm, I'll be surprised if they come with, if the Pacers come with something. That's good. That's a good little jump. Yeah. 
have to agree with you on that one. Like, I, just, I, I can't even think of another rebuttal because I'm just like, dang. Like, I was thinking about it. I was like, shoot, man, they had to go to the game. They had to fight. Pacers had to fight for their life. Mm-hmm. I feel it, man, but I, r- I would rather roll the dice on Indiana shooting. Bro, they were. Bro, they this- broke a record on that last shooting game? Yeah, they were shooting. But, like, that hasn't been consistent. I feel it, but I would rather roll the dice on Jason Tatum or J- Jalen Brown being as, you know, in one of the games leading up to it. Because I got this, the Pacers in six. I really don't think Brzingis being out, it's going to be a game changer for me. So. I can I can roll the dice on Tayden or Jalen Brown well, being got, asked. Got, uh, Pacers got Miles Turner down there. Miles Turner is it's a solid it's big. Solid. It's a solid it's big, man. Team. So it's like you gotta like not having Porzingis there is gonna gonna hurt down there. And they got Siakam. Yeah, so don't sleep on Siakam either. Yeah. So we're gonna see. That, that this is obviously the weaker side of the NBA playoffs. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's always been. Shout so out to like Freddie. Shout out to Stoops, you know what I'm saying? He is a Celtic fan, but you own the blue side, and the blue side is nowhere near as strong as the red side right now. And I can see whoever <laughs> winning, yeah. man. I just, I just see a lopsided NBA Finals. I just like see West the, wins regardless. The West yeah. wins regardless. Yeah, same. I, I, I would want the Celtics to win for my dog, but I just, I can't paint that picture in my head. I just can't. I feel it. I feel it. It's tough. It's tough. Like for years, like. Then when LeBron was in Miami, Derrick Rose was with the Bulls. The the East was the conference to play in. You know what I'm saying? I, it I, was, wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't no? go that far. Come man, on now. Man, I can count on I can count on my hands the, the, the many times I've seen the same teams in the Eastern Conference Finals. Like I can count it on my hands. You want me to do it for you? Raptors, Boston, Miami. Like I mean, shoot, maybe Atlanta, Cleveland, Cleveland in Atlanta. That's five teams right Wait, there. And I didn't make it to the final. No, not the, well, they almost did. They right? almost did. But they, like, we're talking about teams that's been, like, in the past, like, 10, 15 years, that's been almost there. And we the five teams. Because the Raptors went, like, back to back, like, six, seven, eight, nine years in a row. So it's like, and, and lost. And that was when DeMar DeRozan was on there. Could be LeBron. So it's like, Western Conference Finals, you got to worry about, oh, wait, it might be Golden State this year. Right now, it's Timberwolves. Oh, Mavs coming. Uh oh! What about uh, uh, snap? You know, yeah, I would say the Rockets, but <laughs> it's been a while for them too. But I just think there's more dogs in the Western Conference. Like it's 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 harder out there. This year, yeah, these, yeah, it's just tough. They just somehow they have accumulated the most talent on their teams. Like even if you look at the the close comparison to a Western team was the Cavs, and they're out that bitch. They had depth, but I understand some of them depth got hurt. But like they had depth. They're the closest comparison to what you see in the West. Like, yeah. you got a starting five, and you got one or two pieces off the bench that uh, would start That's on right. anybody. Yeah, on start team. on somebody else's team. You got people sitting on a bench that could start on someone else's team. That's <laughs> how you know you got a team. It's like, man, we we got somebody. I feel it. I feel it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I agree. Like, the West is winning it this year, regardless. Who yeah. makes out of here? So, uh, with that being said, like, like face of the NBA right now, at this very moment, who is y'all's face? Mm, the face of the NBA. It's still LeBron. It's still LeBron, bro. LeBron has held the torch for so long. His numbers are still consistent. He plays recently. He played for the Lakers, which is one of the most historic, prestigious franchises in the NBA. And I understand LeBron getting knocked out of the playoffs the last two years, but he been getting sold. He been getting sold. He been getting sold, and he won a ring like three, four years ago. I think LeBron is still the face. I would agree. I would agree with you too. I was, I was gonna say that too, because you know, I was looking at the average. You know, when Stephen A. was talking about LeBron versus Mewtwo, and I was like, dang, he was averaging twenty-seven this year. Like, he ain't really missed a step. It's young dudes that, it's young dudes that ain't being able to do that. But he pushing forty. He said, I'm still out here going. Yeah, I'm still hoping. You just didn't hear too much of it that much because everybody, the way the Lakers team was built, everybody didn't have high hopes for him. You just like. They hit and miss. They had a ceiling of maybe they can hit the uh, conference finals and they had a floor of you not even, you probably going to be a lottery pick type shit. Y'all was that bad at one point. It was like number 10, 11 at one point. I feel it. I feel like, you know, LeBron, you know, he's been in the league for many years and his time is slowly, you know, it's catching up to him, you know what I'm saying? So he will be missed when he does hang it up. But I feel like right now, 
just based off these playoffs, bro, if Anthony Edwards goes all the way, bro, and he wins everything, man, you got to put that emphasis on him, bro. I know it's, he's 22, but, bro, at 22, if you win your first ring. He was still at uh, Mount Payton, still crazy. taking a backseat to LeBron. But once LeBron get up out of there, that's what I'm saying. I ain't got that's no what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So new faces, just to piggyback on what you just said, new faces. Who is in prom position to take over that title as the face of the league after LeBron, Steph Curry, and all them guys leave? Who is next up? To be the face of the league. So you want multiple people, or you just want like that one guy? That one guy, that one dude you watch, the most entertaining player that you watching, and you like, you like him. He got the full package. He athletic. He get a bucket. He charisma, franchise player. I would say Anthony Edwards, man. He's like you just said, like all the things you just listed. Like listening to him on. talking interviews, man. He's a character. Like he's got so much personality. Like he just. Yeah. And he's, you know, I remember he was, he was talking to one dude. He was like, oh, yeah, that chain was fake. Like, yeah, it was fake. I ain't balling out like that. Like, it was, you know, like, that was who, really who he is. Mm -hmm. So, I think he got the potential to do that. And then, like, the way he, I was, oh, who was it? Stephen A was saying about her. Someone was saying, like, yeah, once he win a game, you don't want him talking mess to you because he going to let you feel it. <laughs> he going he gonna, to he gonna make you feel it. Yeah, after he won against, you know, the Nuggets, uh, he was you know, with Charles Barkley. And he was like, I ain't never been to Minnesota. And then, um, and then fucking Anthony's like, bring your ass. <laughs> but like, you're right, though. And one of the things that was mentioned, I, was, I heard on First Take 2 by Shannon Sharp, is he letting you know, and he letting you know when he win and when he lose, he's still chirping. And that's what, y'all know me, I, I always say that, that. I call out people like Chris Paul. He always talking when you win it. As soon as you lose, your head tucked and you walk it straight to the locker room. Like, nah, you need to keep that same energy yeah. all day long. Yeah, right. I agree. I agree. But, uh, you know, not to piggyback on Anthony Edwards, because I really have two players, bro. It's Anthony Edwards is one of them. And if Luca goes all the way too, bro, Luca is the face, could be a face of the NBA too, bro. Just, 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 I just, just, just stating the real. Fan, I can't, I can't bro. buy into it. I'm just bro. not a fan. I, can't, so. I, I like Luca. I do. Luke, I just Luca, can't. Luca does can't everything LeBron does. I, I can't see the vision. I just can't see the vision. I'm trying to. I don't I see what everybody else see. I see like the ac accusations of stat padding. I'm not gonna throw that at him. But in a, a inflated numbers is something I would throw. Numbers that don't really tell the true story. Like usage rate is. Just for people who don't know, usage rate means the amount of possessions that you average where the ball ends because of you. So, like, the the, the ball switched hands because of you. That means turnovers. That means missed shot. miss shots. All that. He's the highest of that. Why? Why, is it, why are you almost 40% having the ball that much on the team? Like, so why? That, that, the fact that you just threw all that out, I'm going to ask you a question. Is Luka leading the Mavs? Is he the leader? Of the Mavs. Yeah, he's the leader of the Mavs, but there's other leaders in the league that don't have to hold the ball that long. That's all I'm saying. Very, uh, yeah. I winning agree. winning leaders. Yeah. Winning leaders. Like, are we we talking about accolades. Accolades. What, we talking about Luka accolades. People bring up individual accolades. Five-time NBA, all NBA. Oh, before the age of 25. Like, fuck that. You ain't one shit. I don't give a fuck about how many individual so stats you got. Luka, so if Luca wins the championship this year, you gonna let this slide? Or you if he win, yeah. if he win, I'll say yeah, he next up. He next up. I think I can agree with that. I, can, I, I can't say nothing. If he able to take his team to the mountaintop, the way he planned. Because for years, people said the same thing about LeBron. Especially LeBron usage rate was never LeBron, that high when he won. LeBron used to be like you said. LeBron actively also made people around him better. So like he, he nah, like, go, ahead, yeah, go, ahead, go ahead. So go ahead. In, in 2007, when the Cleveland Cavaliers faced the Spurs, okay. LeBron for the previous two years was averaging 30 points and plus. Right, he was like number one scoring back to back years. Mm -hmm. His what well, you're explaining, Luca was he. LeBron was exactly that, and he still led the Cavs to the NBA Finals, even though he Nobody got swept. Has ever won a championship? Even though they got leading the league in usage in the last 20 years. Nobody has. 
I hate that you brought well, up nobody. That, I hate that you brought up that 07 Cavs team. Come on, dog. Like <laughs> I'm saying, like, you, I'm like, saying he had the I highest. I want you to name range. name the starting five. Like I, <laughs> that's, the fact that you threw that that team out there. I'm like that. That's tough, dog. Like he had to do that though. He had to if he want. But then again, also like I said before, the East was sorry. <laughs> the East was trash. So yeah. It was easier for him to go out there and be like, okay, 30, 30, 30, we in the Eastern Conference Finals. Because who was stopping him? Who was stopping LeBron? Not absolutely no yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Luka yeah. Doing it in the West. yeah. Luka hasn't done it in the West. Luka done it one time in the West. You know, one so time. let's compare The it. bubble was <laughs> iffy. The last two years, what, two, three years, one of them he ain't make the playoffs. The last time he got bounced out in the first round, Y'all talking about him doing something. He ain't done shit. Let's, get, let's compare this. He so ain't done shit. In the mid-2000s, other than like the Heat and obviously the Cavs who were going to reach the finals, right? Awesome. The Detroit Pistons were, can, were a force. You know, they were always yeah. there. They were always there. You know, and up until when they lost to the Spurs in 05, they were still consistently going to the, every Eastern Conference final. The nemesis for LeBron was Detroit. And in that year when they advanced, when they finally beat them in the game seven, LeBron had like 65 or something on a game seven to advance. Man, look, what Luka is doing right now, yes, he has Kyrie. You know, yes, he has all this stuff. But what y'all should be, what y'all, like not to cut you off, but what y'all suck his dick for is what y'all should be sucking Jokic's dick for. Because Jokic do it and more. Jokic is way and, higher. And we give him his flowers. Everything y'all be like, oh, look at this. Jokic is that. Except that hey, look, look, Jokic did all what Luka did except won a championship, won MVP. Jokic is what y'all, like, that's why I and get annoyed. And what is Luka going to do this year? He is in the Western Conference Finals. That's why I get annoyed because niggas just tell me so, Luka, Luka, Luka with no mention of Jokic. Oh, look at this, look at that. Jokic is doing what Jokic, he do, but officially... Because Jokic already won his championship. He won his MVP. So he has his, this, ain't no, this ain't no ping pong ball. Like, are we not sharing shit? If I'm winning, I'm winning. Exactly. <laughs> My right, look, I, I, would say, I would say that I'm glad that we had this talk about Jokic because now I realize he my number two <laughs> for the face. Because the only thing Jokic is missing is athleticism. He's just missing athleticism. But look, he he do less. He do more with less. Like he's he he's like okay, I'm not. I ain't gonna be able to out jump anybody or do nothing like that. But I'm about to I'm about to hit y'all with some some bag moves. I'm not gonna deep. Lie. Like I'm talking about deep. Like the stuff I ain't never seen nobody do before. It was real salty when he lost the Timberwolves because Anthony Edwards was like, "Nah, fuck you. I'm not finna." Talk yeah, to Anthony Edwards was in his head. Anthony Edwards was in his head. So. I just can't see him being a face because he's salty. He be always salty. Nah, he, he, he wins. Because he's won. a winner. He's a winner. Nobody, like, nobody want to be. Like I said, everything y'all praise Luca from is you look at Jokic, it actually means something. I dropped 30, I got a triple-double, but I had 10. I shot 40% from the field and had 10 turnovers. You look at Jokic, oh, I had 30 points, I had a triple-double, but I shot fucking 80% from the field and only had two turnovers. Who's the better player? I mean, the thing Jokic is, is, look, I will let it slide because Luca is the star player of the map. So if Luca wants to take up shots, but he's but he's making them hoes, but also when, missing when, him. When Jokic Jokic he's star making them the hoes. What, are you, what are we talking about? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. If if this energy is the same for Jokic, what's wrong with Luca doing it though? Because Luca is Luka's doing it consistently doing it in the night. He's not doing it the right way. At the end, when you look so at so what's his, the right way? When you look at his stat line at the end, you compare him to Jokic. Right it looks the same. The right way is, but it's not if, pretty. Basketball. If we talking about it, it's not pretty. Like if we put it on paper, ten assists, ten rebounds, five five blocks, no turnovers. That's a solid stat line. Like it ain't it ain't the best, but that's a solid but stat line. Now, but then you look over. Wait, wait. You look over. Okay, I had thirty points, ten assists. But I had eight turnovers and I shot forty percent from the field. It's like, damn, dog. Yeah, bro. <laughs> when he had a triple double. Everybody was like, oh yeah, the the Mavs. They won game. What they or they lost game, but Lucas still had a triple double. You know, Luca also only made five shots and he shot twenty of them motherfuckers. Like, that's why you lost. So you last lost game he, he had. The game. So last game he had a triple double. And it was his first efficient game of the whole series. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about the game five. Then. Except the turnovers. He did. He still had a bunch so of turnovers. So what was it? It was, a, it was a game that they won. He had a triple double, but he had like also like eight or nine turnovers, but they won. Okay. So that's fine. You they can let it slide. They, you can let it slide though because they won. And it's a triple double. I don't, I don't really like that logic when it comes look, to that. There, there's, look, there is no way of playing perfect ball. You play, you play. Every player has their own dynamics. I I'm just saying, I don't want that on my team. 
because you obviously hurting us in ways that we can't make up for. Because we even lost games before. It before. might hurt you, but yet yeah, you will still take him because of what he can do it's for the you. Dallas Mavericks. You know what I'm saying? Team. It's not the Dallas Mavericks, Luca. Team basketball is team basketball. Before All sports. The trades, they would be like they probably would be on the bubble. They would they'd be like on the bubble and probably uh, play in team. Like let's just be real. Before Bro, the two trades. See? The defense was ass, literally worse than the league it. at yeah, defense. And then when you traded these, got these two big niggas in here, all of a sudden you became the the best defense in the league. That's because nobody can come in the paint on you. Obviously, this, this is a lot of stuff for a player who is reaching his third Western Conference final. Second, no, his third. It's his second. Second, yes. Oh, his second. The first time was in the bubble. bubble this yeah. is the second time. His second Western Conference finals, and hasn't won nothing. Yeah, this I, is the I year. Say, I think it all going to come to a halt. Is either he going to put up or shut up. Exactly. Put up or shut up. So if he puts up, all the things that you're saying can be verified, can be valid, can be it, whatever you want it to be. But if he doesn't put up and he, get, he gets shut up, then it's like all that was for nothing. All I can say is, to, just to summarize, so my point is, you know the player that Luca is. You know what he's going to give you, but you also know what he might not give you. And that's the dice you got to roll because as good as a player that he is, he can get you that championship. But at the same time, you have to be willing to accept his turnovers. His He's going to put up shots because he is just that player. I don't know. As a coach, I couldn't gamble that much, man. That, that sounds like a, it just, you know, it's, 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 it's games, though. It sounds like a gamble. It's a trade-off. Like you said, yeah. you take the good with the bad. I understand that because one thing I don't, like, cap about when I argued my Russell Westbrook argument all the time is I don't cap and say he don't turn over the ball. Like, I understand he turn over the ball. I, that's a, that's what come with him. I'm, I I highlight all what he do for a team in general. But I understand he shoot tor- terrible, but usually he truly make players around him better. That's, like, this is cap for Luka. Because, like, when he, when Russ played with, when he played Robin the Batman, them Batmans was MVP candidates because of him. And never was again after he wasn't with them. So Luca not doing that for niggas, but Russ would. So people compare that game because the triple double, and that's what I see. I'm like y'all just praising a nigga for nothing. But anyway, just to close off that, uh, uh, let me say this though. Go, go ahead, but go. just just to compare the difference though, who's more closer to winning a championship? Russ went to the finals. Russ well, went to the finals. Yeah. I get I get this is it's Luca's second Western Conference appearance, but this is his opportunity to get there. And if he wins. Like I said, you got to put him over Russ. I, I, I will. I will. I will. I'll if, put he win, if he wins it, then yeah. But I was still I'm, – I'm on the Westbrook side right now because he he did it with absolutely no one. Like, it was – he had to He had to show up. It was him having to show up. Just like that 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 Cavaliers, you brought back LeBron 07. Le, LeBron had to show up or it, it wasn't going to happen. Yeah, because Larry Hughes wasn't going to do it. Yeah, Larry Hughes <laughs> wasn't going to do it. What, boy? None of them was going to do it, dog. <laughs> But just to wrap up the original question, who I think is going to be like next up as the face of the NBA is somebody that a lot of people forgot about. I still think John ja Morant is. Yeah. If he's healthy. As a human highlight reel, he got the charisma. Before he got in trouble and before he got hurt and missed this season, so many kids was dying of dread. And, you know, he was the coolest player in the league. And he was getting a bucket. His stats, not – like super godly, but he will still average you like well, twenty eight. He's, he's still young though, too. He's still like he only been in the league what two three years. Like he still got stuff to build off of. He got a lot to build off of still. Memphis was a high C when he was playing. Yeah, the what uh, what I'm talking about. Problem. So, so, John Morant, I I hope he come back and get something to prove. And well, he did though, because remember when he came back off first injury, he came back. He said, "I'm gonna go ahead and drop forty on y'all real quick." <laughs> so it was like. Yeah, I'm back. But then, you know, he got hurt again. There was like, we might as well let you go ahead and sit out now because season yeah. almost over. We ain't going to playoffs. It's sad, bro, because that's what Zion should have been. The Zion be bullshitting, bro. <laughs> Fuck Zion. <laughs> I, be, I, I never was a believer in Zion. I'm not going to lie. I heard it from the scouts. Like, look, if you get Ja, he is an established player who did his thing at Murray State, and he led him to a couple of, you know, NCAA runs. Zion, you're just getting the hype, the package. I would <sighs> say um, – Zion, Zion reminds me of. Uh, I remember that number one pick from UNLV. Yeah, Anthony, Anthony Bennett. Bennett. Anthony yes, Bennett. that's well, that's Zion what. A bucket though. But, he, but he, Zion, but Zion gave me like when I seen his build, his body. I'm like, he kind of giving me Anthony Bennett type feels. And then he got into the league. 
I'm like, oh, you on bullshit already? Just got here? He Niggas hurt. wasted pick on you then. <laughs> he was in his bag when he got hurt this year. In the yeah, yeah. When game. he came back, oh, yeah, yeah. He, he was different. But it's just like, I'm tired of you. to lock in, bro. Around. Lock in, Yeah, because he's too inconsistent. It's just the inconsistency has already shown, and he ain't been in the lead that long. It's just, you know. I can count on my hand how long he's been in the lead. It's because whenever you compare Zion, you got to compare Jock because Zion was picked. That's the drop that came Yeah, exactly. Like Zion. Like you got to compare Luka with Trey Young. Exactly. Zion was drafted first, Jaw was second. And if Jaw didn't get hurt, Memphis would be in playoffs right now. They would probably be, not probably top seed, but yeah. they would be in yeah. for sure because he would carry that. Zion, what, he got eliminated in playing? Yeah, he got eliminated in playing. <laughs> come on, bro. I know he got hurt in that hole, but, but McC- come on, hey, man. man. I don't think people give CJ McCollum enough credit, dog. He was balling. He was getting he buckets, was balling bro. This year, You've dog. always been a CJ McCollum fan. I've always been a CJ McCollum fan, cause I, and I hate people that down him, but he – Every time, like when he was playing with Dame, him and Dame was, they they called him yeah. the they called him the uh, you know Splash Brother number two. I was like they they need their own thing though because they was really out there getting a bucket. Man, but, but I blame Brandon Ingram for why it didn't work with the Pelicans though. Brandon Ingram was another person that he needed to stay healthy too. Yeah. He he just couldn't stay because they have a team. The they team did. is did, the team they is did. solid. Like they yeah. got. The bodies, the it's there. Yeah. It's just nobody on there. The they main people can't stay healthy. They yeah. main keys cannot stay healthy. Pain. Well, we hit the main talk to- topic of the NBA. Ain't much really. Well, before we go, before we you know rattle off and talk about bullshit, I do want to mention the WNBA starting off hot, selling tickets. The WNBA now they, I think news broke that they now have like chartered planes to take the players. Yeah, that's crazy. Being a WNBA player and having to take a public flight. Like, while you see NBA players, I understand the disparity in the money they make compared to what y'all make because they probably gross a lot more money than y'all make. But, like, damn, you just imagine you sitting on the plane next to, you know what I'm saying? Holly Diggins or like, you know what I'm saying? You just a regular Joe. Like, what's up with you? I'm going to just say this off, Rick. Kelsey Kelsey Plum, dog. I'm going to just. I'm gonna just say this off rip. I already ordered my K- uh, Clayton Clark jersey. Oh, you did. And my Cameron Bring jersey. You know I'm like, saying, I'm I, already, I'm already gonna say I that off rip. Man. Getting on Caitlin Clark, I was just about to like go off on her a little bit. I don't like how they, I don't like how they, they treating her, man. Hey. I don't like how they, it's a lot of bashing her. It's a lot of animosity. I think it's because it's like even though so many people are trying to be professionals and say the right things on camera and the media and the press, saying how. She's doing good for the the sport and bringing all this attention to us. Thank you, Caitlin. At the same time, as a competitor, we all competed yeah. in sports. You, that's this is your contemporary, <laughs> and you probably looking at her like, yeah. man, I'm, I'm, I could be that. You know what I'm saying? I understand that. It's like you know, I, I've been in the WNBA for for five years, six years, and this little rookie gonna come in here and steal my shine. I hate you. I get the hate. I do. And to be honest, I'm going to give her a little, little cred right now. She is the closest to Steph Curry that we got. Like she can step back in mm-hmm. anywhere, bro. Anywhere. Yeah, and we'll I, make I that shit. We'll yeah, make I, that I, shit. I, and I believe it. And I'm a big Caitlin Clark fan. Uh, like, I want, I want the women's basketball to grow because right. yeah. there are some, like there's some girls out there that can really ball, like mm-hmm. really ball. Yeah. And it's just, they don't get enough. Media attention, they don't get enough of anything, but I'm a big Kayla Carter. You know who fan. started all this animosity bullshit, bro? And I, I said her bitch ass name too. Man, why she gotta be all that? We be- love the woman around here. Because because she's always been a hater, bro. Like every <laughs> and oh man, I, I hate her. <laughs> Diana Taurasi, bro. Ever since she opened her mouth after oh, the yeah, Taurasi do be talking that. Bro, mess. Taurasi always talks shit, bro. Like unnecessary shit. Like, shut up. <laughs> shut up. You old. Like we we you your era's done. This is Caitlin Clark's era. Shut up. Though, you know what I'm saying? Nah, not even that. We Fuck not, that. We not be we not be little. Because you've done this your whole career. Please shut up. I just think that it needs to be more like especially those people that aren't playing. Those women that aren't playing anymore. They need to definitely build build up these young players and oh and don't bash them as much. Like no one's perfect. Yes. Oh yeah. She had eight turnovers. Ten turnovers. She's it's, it's only been like her third game. Like what y'all expect? Yeah. Like y'all expect her to go out here and just, oh yeah, 30, 30, 10, and five. Like like she got she got like a I mean, I've seen a couple of videos where the picks that she's gotten, they've been some vicious picks. They're not, you know playing, with her. They're not playing with it. That's her wake up moment, but I feel like it. she already can put up not 
the same numbers but similar numbers. So you already can see once you get right. adjusted, she might take off on everybody. Yeah. And I'm and, sure she she has that mindset of like, okay, this is my welcome to the league moments, right? Yeah. But I'm finna get up and I'm finna get a bucket and bust your ass. Yeah. Like so, I'm I'm sure she, I'm sure she's handling. How that. lucky is all the players involved in her draft class? Man. I understand they have to be measured to her because of how yeah, good of she is. But like that is, a, she's lucky to even come in that draft class. The with Cameron Brinks and Angela Reese and. Uh, Camila Cardosa, like yeah, all of them, bro. I love girl. And she played for the Sparks. If she don't, if she, if she don't take off and be a superstar, it don't make no sense. Because mm-hmm. Cameron Briggs got the look. You know what I'm saying? She played for the Sparks. She get a bucket. She looks like a model. Like, bro, she could go running. She Damn. could. Hey, you in LA? You I could. Think, I think. Uh, what are you talking about? You know, I really like. I would say <laughs> this. This is the most I've been interested in women's basketball. Like, no, it's just. It's just like <laughs> I've seen. I've seen the potential and I see the growth. I'm like, if they're gonna do it, this is this is the time that's gonna happen. Yeah, is the growth is gonna happen right here in the next ten years. It's gonna be these these women holding on and pushing them to that status. I mean, I don't think they'll ever be up there with NBA, but these women are gonna start making the money they deserve because they work just as hard as most of these dudes out here too. So the thing is, they just got to the players that come in behind them got to keep it coming. Gotta keep you it gotta coming. keep yeah, the yeah. talent rolling in. To be comparable that, to what you see yeah, that now. That dog, that fight, that, okay, you know, she did it. I can do it too, but I'm going to do it better. That Like trying to one-up each other. Yeah, you got to set that bar higher every time and just keep setting it because it's already like that in the NBA. Like they already got their standards already up there. So they like, it's like almost winning the lottery to get in so there. so much about how we enjoyed watching March Madness this year. How we watched it. March Madness women is the most I've ever watched it. Yeah. And it was the most entertaining. And no sexist shit, but like the reason why I stayed away from watching WNBA extensively is because I can watch niggas catch alleys in the NBA. Like that's literally catch, you know what I'm saying? Catch yeah, catch boom, alley. nothing. Yeah. They're not booming nothing, but they got a little shot on them. And I do like, I do appreciate the clean, the cleanliness of their game. Yeah. I it's do. a lot. It's like the play, they run plays. Like they, they run plays. They run plays and they do this, they do that. They break stuff down. Like in, Sometimes in NBA, it looks like they just out there like one on one. Oh, got a back cut, easy throw, bam! It's like you know, it's kind of just like yeah. it ain't. It, it's just like y'all, y'all playing five on five pickup game with, with some of the best players to ever do it. It's, but women, it's like, hey, you got to set this screen. If you don't set this screen hard, we ain't getting open for no shot. Yeah, yeah, facts. Yeah, it's, it's like, yeah. it's yeah. But going back to the alley shit, just I got randomly thought about it. It's really off topic. I'm gonna say it anyway. But but. Derrick Jones and Luka Doncic is a little backdoor alley cut. You know who they stole that from? James Harden and Russell Westbrook. They done it in Houston. They done it in Clippers. Like every time James Harden got the set up, Russ hit the backdoor cut, lob, alley. Boom. Nobody expected. I seen them run that play so many times. I was like, I stole that shit from my nigga dog. Back to women's basketball anyway. (laughs) Like for years, like UConn dominated the women's basketball programs. You know what I'm saying? And Tennessee was always up there too. Shout out to the late great uh, uh, Tennessee coach. Mm -hmm. Um, She's no longer with us. But um, they were always the the two programs that were always competing with each other. And Brittany Brittany Griner came in the picture and she kind of changed that. Well, she was you know what I'm she was like the one she yeah. was a front runner yeah. for a while like that. I thought yeah. that she was gonna be the one that's gonna uh, push the W because she came in there, oh yeah, I'm yeah. I'm six ten and I can I can yam that. <laughs> I was like oh. no, for real, for real, bro. <laughs> and I can for dunk real. that. Yeah. But it's like, you know, of course it, it you know, things happen. You but know? do you do you think that the lack of you know, cause you know, this is the first I guess first time I'm watching WNBA. I can't really speak on the competition, right, of the league because I really wasn't watching like that, but mm-hmm. do you think the lack of competition that Brittany Grinder had at the time, how it is now, was just completely different? I just think that. I just think that, in my opinion, probably. I don't think she worked hard. Enough. Mm. I don't think she worked hard enough. I just think she didn't have to. It wasn't a lot yeah, of and, and, yeah. And, and, well, exactly. But that's the thing, though. She thought that her height was going to carry her to wherever she wanted to be because she was one of the tallest yeah. people, one of the tallest girls. But now, girls pulling up, they six ten, seven, seven, six seven, like they. And long arms. Okay. So, like, now you just, like, ain't no... There's other people like you now. Like, you were the one of a kind <laughs> yeah. at one point. But yeah. now there's other women out there that's like you. Yeah. So, now it's like you had your time, but I feel like you wasted it because you just thought that your height was going to coach you all the way through the Definitely. league Definitely. and make you a, you know, a, a star WNBA player right. and not have to work hard for it because people came in behind her and was like, 
Oh, we hungry, and we know who you is. Same thing. Kayla Clark moment. Oh, yeah, we know who you are. Yeah. Now, I want to talk about something fun real quick. Oh, let me just say this, though. But it's only a matter of time before we see Cameron bring dunk. Because she's like, what, 6'9"? 6'4". 6'4"? She can do it. She can do it, though. She can Torch do it. Bro, you seen her next to Otani? God. Bro, <laughs> she's tall in that man. My God. Otani like the game. Roof. But, nah, it is summertime in Austin, Texas. It's hot as hell. <sighs> it's the hottest time Está caliente. of the year for us. Like, we be burning out here. But besides that, for the summer, what y'all got planned? Any crazy plan? Any fun things planned? Like, what y'all got? What y'all doing this summer? It's just, you know, Austin became such a, uh, a hot spot, you know, thanks to TikTok and all these California people moving here. It's, it's, uh... It's kind of like everything that you could do in the summertime is going to be met with a crowd. Anything that you used to do that we was kids that was fun, Barge Springs, uh, any really any local pool now, because Austin's such a, a major city now, it's going to be packed. Unless yeah. you try to hit it like, if you try to hit it during weekdays, mm-hmm. you might. And right when it opens. <laughs> yeah, but but it's, it's the thing is, like, you know, like, you know, I work with kids during the summer. Mm-hmm. I pull up there during the weekday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, whenever day I want to. Still packed. Like, I, I don't even not mention that because I remember Slitterbond. I talked to one of my coworkers and he went on a Thursday versus I went on a Saturday. Saturday oh, was chaotic. I think I couldn't, I can barely get on some of the rides. Right. He said he went on Thursday. He was chilling. He got on everything about three, four, five times. Well, you know, that's, it's, it's, it's. You know, parents do work during the week. So, yeah, of course, you know. Saying. So, if you have that time to take it during the week, yeah, I mean, but that's also a water park. But, like, a local pool, that's free. Like, you know, 5 $6, if anything. Yeah. Those are the ones that's going to be hot. I can't, you know, some people can't afford inflation. Going crazy. Can't afford no $50 Slitter Bond ticket. We need to go to a water park. We got some plan for that. We need to just go to a water park and really just vibe out. You know Check what I'm out. saying? Check it out. Show off the abs and six-pack, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that we hiding underneath these. I got, I got damn <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And just go out there and just work our stuff. Yes, sir. I think for me, um, you know, in the summer, I try to just be a little more active. I like to do hiking trails. Mm-hmm. So I'm definitely going to be in the hill country. Any dates? Any dates? Want to go on hiking trails with my dog over here? <laughs> We're going to be doing some trails over there in the in the hill country. Uh, but other than that, man, uh, my birthday is in the summer. So you know for sure we're going to turn up. We actually got some planned for that. So we're going to be out. You don't want to spoil it? No, no spoilers. Spoiler? All right. We're going to be we uh, we hitting up Dallas. Uh, stay tuned. We're going to be dropping some videos and uh, viewer discretion advice. Oh, shit. This party, like, what's that, what's that movie called? Pro- uh, Project uh, X. Project X. Yeah. Project X. Yeah. X in Dallas. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Something like Should I talk about something about Austin? Should I drop that in there, too, since we're talking about. You might as well. Yeah. You know, I'm really excited. You know, we're about to launch this, you know, something about Austin, man. It's going to be highlighting all those key trails that you like, those views, yeah. the beautiful experience of Austin for those people that never been. We'll get to look through the eyes of city boys here in, in Austin, like what the views look like, what's some of the best food to eat, mm-hmm. some of the best burger places that we love to go to that we usually always talk about in these podcasts that y'all know nothing about. Mm-hmm. Y'all don't get yeah. to see us at them. And then you can also get to see us taking those hiking trails and taking out those beautiful views of Austin. I'm really excited to launch that, man. It's, you know, no, facts. It's, it's going to be, be fun. fun yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Because everyone talks about Austin. Yeah. But everyone knows that there's always something about Austin. So it's <laughs> going to be nice. like a teleprompter in front of them. There's always something, man. Just <laughs> it's, something. It's, it's, it's something about Austin. something, right? bro. Something about Austin. Nah, but it's really uh, the most thing I'm excited about is highlighting them local spots, them local joints, and really showing up. It's really showing them to y'all who ain't from here or people who is from here and ain't heard about some of these spots. I feel like. Yep. Just give us an opportunity to just get out there and just collaborate, meet fun people. You know what I'm saying? Because here in Austin, you have everything from soul food to Mexican food, you know, white people food, everything, man. And we're all we're all just (laughs) we're all just white. You know, we're all just culturally living together. Together, American food. food. American food. We got American food. food. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but. You know, it is what it is. Not a problem. Yeah. No, nah, but not nah, dope. We got yeah, some fun it, stuff. It is a good melting pot of a little bit of everything. Now, you know, opening your horizons to new things like India food, Mediterranean. I've been trying different stuff like that. So there's a lot of places like that Bro, that I knew sorry. nothing about. Yeah. Make sure we make sure we hit the vegan Johns. You know what I'm saying? The vegan joints. You know what I'm saying? The Arlo's and all that. Mm-hmm. Test out a couple vegan joints, man. 
if you put me on them. But that'll do it for the day. You know what I'm saying? We're recording this on Tuesday, May 21st. This is episode 18, technically. I don't know why so many people said 19 in here, but it's 18. They don't obviously know what's going on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 18? <laughs> no, I'm just bullshitting. But thank you for viewing. Thank you for listening. Uh, keep Stay locked in with us. Like, comment, share on all pages, Instagram, TikTok. I'm your boy, Jameer Got Heart. It's your boy, Rod the God, man. Y'all make sure y'all check us out on Sundays. Something about Austin. I'm going to be your host, and I'll have my co-host with me, Tay. It's going to be fantastic, man. It's going to be good. Like, share, subscribe on that. Yes, sir. Moon Man Ed out here. Signing out. Peace.